if there's no music of today, there will be no music of tomorrow. And it's just as simple as that for me. Music can either be a museum piece, and we can always play the past, or we can look boldly to the future and continue to express what we as humans feel walking on the planet. And to me, that's what New Dynamic Records, the commissioning process, and new music is all about. So music is such a wonderful dynamic art form, and I really see it as, as, a, as a triangle. You have the performer, you have the composer, you have the audience, and all three parties work together to make this singularly expressive art form as magical as it is. And for me, most musicians get to work with a lot of composers who are no longer with us. The Bachs, the Beethovens, the Mozarts, the Brahms. I enjoy them too, I play them as well, but I find them a lot less fun to converse with than people who are actually alive. I prefer people I can go and have a beverage with and enjoy conversation and, and share views. I really love to work with composers because we're both living in the same time period. We both have similar frames of reference in which we then use as a jumping off point for making our art. And so there's that true spirit of artistic kinsmanship that comes from musicians living and working in the same areas in the same time period. I met Lindsay Goodman for the first time uh, playing in the West Virginia Symphony. We both have uh, jobs there. I play principal timpani and she's a principal flute player. And we first collaborated on a project where I had uh, commissioned a bunch of composers to write timpani chamber music works. And uh, one of the composers wrote a, a piece for woodwind quintet piano timpani and I asked her to be on that and we both shared a love for new music uh, I guess in that, in that orchestra setting uh, which us who uh, have done a lot of new music projects and so we then started to collaborate more. Um, I did a little bit of work with uh, a group that she plays with in Pittsburgh called the Pittsburgh New Music Ensemble and then we just continued to enjoy playing together. Where the collaboration really takes flight is in the preparation towards the first performance and, and the preparation again for this recording session where, um, uh, you know, things that don't quite work for me, I have tweaked and revised and things that, that don't quite work for her, she's able to come to me and say, well, you know, that's not going to quite work or it would be a little easier if we worked it this way. And so I think that the um, it's a great example of the maybe the most valuable part of a collaboration is mutual trust. So that if I say, no, it really needs to be this way, then Lindsay will be like, okay, well then I'll figure out a way to make it work. And I know that if she says, I can't do that, or I can't do that well, or I can't do that the way I know you want it to be done, then I will also accept that and trust her and, and make a change. So. Well, I remember one of the things that I uh, liked about working with Lindsay as an artist is that she's always looking to do something different and she's not afraid of trying new things. So, for example, um, and I didn't know this when we first met, but apparently she's a really good singer. So over the years, she revisited her interest in developing her voice and be began basically combining her worlds together. So she started commissioning pieces like Rob Deemer's The Road from Hana and Jeffrey Nitsch's Covenant, both of which incorporate this electronic playback of multiple tracks of her on the flute but also her singing uh, with her voice at different points of the piece. Uh, she also commissioned some really interesting works like Chrysalis written by composer Gilda Lyons that requires not only singing in the flute itself, but also in the piano. And so um, taking all of this, in addition over the past year, she formed a, a group of hers. It's actually a trio called Assembly. Uh, it's with pianist Anna Waltner and percussionist Scott Christian. And um, she asked me to write a, a piece for them since they were starting a tour in the fall of 2014. So basically after talking back and forth, we thought, well, why don't we do an album that incorporates all those things like flute and electronics, uh, pieces that incorporate her voice, and then spotlight the assembly trio as well. And so basically that's how the album came to life. You pick up a solo flute CD and you think you know what you're going to hear, but I think in this disc people are going to be pleasantly surprised by both the range of styles and aesthetics represented by the different commissions here and by the range of sounds you're going to hear, from something that sounds exceedingly industrial in Judith Chayton's Penelope's song to something that sounds 
completely meditative in Eric Stem's New Year, and from something that really explores the inner psychology of the human mind in Grant Cooper's Other Voices, to something that sounds like a beach vacation in Rob Deemer's The Road from Hana, and something that really speaks to the heart in Jeff Nitch's Covenant, which is actually based on my friend Jessica Malili Han's wedding vows. So you have a little bit of everything. I think this is a really exciting disc that when people pick it up, they might not like every single track on it, but I think there's going to be something that speaks to them. There's something for hardcore new music people, Jill Lyon's Chrysalis, which is exceedingly experimental, features nearly all extended techniques, and then things that have beautiful, lovely melodies that you're gonna be whistling in the car afterwards. So I think that people are going to be really excited to hear the gamut of what American composers are doing right now in the world of flute and in the world of extended chamber music, both with acoustic and electroacoustic possibilities. Please.